this is the last video for the Brussels case study. We just saw what types of results academic research offered in the case of Brussels. This type of results take in some cases several years to be elaborated. While they offer a deeper understanding of the complex functioning of cities, they sometimes provide too detailed results. In fact, it can become very difficult for policymakers to extract what is essential from, what, from the general aspects of a metabolism. And it's very difficult to understand which policies should be developed to decrease the environmental impact of cities. Over the last years, I had the opportunity to complement my academic research with projects for local and regional administrations. In this video, I want to spend some time to show you what an urban metabolism study done for an environmental administration looks like. The study was commissioned by the Regional Ad uh, Environmental Administration of Brussels uh, by the beginning of 2014. The main objectives were to bring out the main flows entering and exiting Brussels, as well as their uh, environmental, socio-economic and planning challenges. These objectives aimed, on the one hand, to raise awareness on the need to transition towards a more circular economy, but also on the other, to uh, support the development of, pay, uh, of policies um, helping uh, Brussels' economy to shift towards a more circular state. The study was divided into four main parts. The literature review of relevant urban metabolism and circular economy studies, perform or carry out the metabolic study itself, so measuring the flows, Part 3 selected 12 flows and assessed their impacts if they were made circular. And the final part detailed five flows and proposed some innovative measures. During part 1, we reviewed a number of, case, of cases that had, uh, that had already been development, developed um, or had proposed a circular economy strategy. The main conclusions from that part was that each study revealed something very singular to one city that was not really comparable with other cities. The second point was that data availability and the quality of data really determine what is possible to do afterwards in order to propose policies. So if your data is uh, is not good enough, then your policies will only re reflect how, um, how good your analysis and your data was. Um, it was also pointed out that no specific methodology uh, seemed to be the best, so it was important in this case to choose um, to make a methodology that provided a broad overview, that had scientific rigor, and enable the reproducibility of the study. Finally, when it came to circular economy plans, uh, it seemed that other experiences were too recent and didn't enable us to be critical enough and take some step back to see if they worked or if they were relevant for these case studies. The second part of the study was to measure the metabolism of Brussels per se. This is very similar to the one we showed in the previous video, and you can see the synthesis of this exercise over here. Again, the same type of flows. This is a different type of visualization, but the same type um, of findings could come out. Now, in this report, we, we looked at each of the flows and the material stock separately, and everything was analyzed, their source and their methodology, uh, that was used to measure them was very detailed, but we won't discuss the specifics here as we have already done so just before. The conclusion from this part were that we managed to measure each flow and their order of magnitudes. It was underlined that a number of uncertainties and a, uh, and a great number of sources were used, and finally, that um, as there was one study in the 70s and after that there was no other studies until 
the one of 2015, there is no possible comparison um, or validation of what was fined. So, what one of the major conclusions of the of uh, the metabolism study was that the findings are still quite fragile, and we need to validate them much more in order to develop policies upon them. The second part of conclusions that we saw from uh, from the metabolism of Brussels was that, as we we saw in this graph, it, the the economy of Brussels was very very linear, and it was um, dependent on imports. Uh, as a result, Brussels uh, will struggle to become uh, circular locally. It could become circular with its vaster hinterland, but because it's missing some parts of the supply chains, it cannot do so locally. Finally, the material stock is a major uh, challenge for circular economy, as it is the nexus between um, resource use and waste generation. The third part of the study explored 12 material flows and whether it was possible to make these flows more circular. These flows were chosen in collaboration with the Environmental Administration and as you can see here they included uh, for instance the flow of paper uh, and whether it was possible to use it as insulation, the, the possibility of recovering heat from a sewer system or the valorization of end-of-life lithium batteries coming from electric vehicles. While the explored flows are very heterogeneous, the one from the others, two main conclusions emerged. The the recircularized, to recircularize flows, it is necessary to design products taking into account uh, the, the later stages of this products one once its, uh, its primary use is finished. So you need to think about the reuse, remanufacturing or recycling processes from the beginning of the design. The second conclusion was that to help this process of recirculation and eco-design, you also need regulatory instruments. Some, some of these instruments could be, uh, let's say, carbon taxes or certifications of products, uh, of circular products, let's say. The last part of the city, of the study uh, was a detailed analysis of five flows. This time, the economic, develop, the economic and environmental benefits from making these flows circular were estimated. The study the studied flows were um, uh, the material flows of the arts sector, the industrial wastes, the valorization of, for, uh, of local forestry operations in Brussels, and finally two flows from the tertiary buildings, the HVAC and the furniture. As Brussels is a service-based economy and it's home to a number of EU institutions, it is also home for, to an important office building stock. In addition, Brussels has an important office space turnover, which means a lot of people go to different offices and new offices are refurbished very frequently. This, uh, this um, office space turnover puts a, consid a considerable amount of uh, furniture to waste every year. In this map, we have, uh, we have estimated the number of furniture in tertiary buildings, and it was estimated to be almost half a million of uh, pieces of furniture. It was also estimated that around 24,000 pieces of furniture were replaced every year in Brussels. By doing some uh, calculations, it was approximated that by reselling a quarter of this quantity exiting the, um, the system at the third of their original price, this could generate about 9 million euros per year or, and or create almost 60 jobs. The conclusion of this part was that in order to, 
to make flows more circular, it is necessary to better measure the available stock in the city. You need to top that with what we said before, so the regulatory mechanism, because they need to be adapted in order to favorize it. Finally, the public sector needs to lead the way and give some very good examples to make circular economy practices more mainstream. By measuring all flows entering and exiting in a detailed manner, Brussels managed to have a broader understanding of its metabolism. While the results of this study are for different, are very different from the research ones, it is important to underline how valuable this exercise was for policymaking. Uh, on the next module, we will explain how Brussels developed its circular economy plan thanks to most of the presented findings.